Welcome to the 12 steps to Navier Stokes originally taught by Lorena Barber. In this case we will do step number 9, the Laplace equation. So I'm not that into the um, physic uh, thematic anymore, so I try to briefly um, describe what the Laplace equation is, but um, if you want to take a deeper look into the into the physics, I uh, recommend you to watch Lorena Barber's videos on, on YouTube. So the problem was that with the Navier-Stokes equation, I think for inviscid flow, you had the problem that there's no obvious way to couple velocity and pressure. So what do you what do you do about that? So we have those two equations um, here on the top, and you write that out for 2D, so two dimensions make a little bit of uh, algebra and um, you see that you can uh, neglect those terms because those terms uh, are like equation one and so they are zero and on the left hand side you can you can shrink that term into that one on the right hand side you can do more or less the same uh, see the terms so you can cast a zero and then you're left with this equation and uh, with this equation you state a, a condition and this is the Poisson equation for pressure that ensures that continuity is, is satisfied and the Poisson equation will be step number 10 and the Laplace equation is the summation of two second derivatives of a particular function p and those two have to be zero and in the navier stokes equation they let me see step 10 or 11 11 there are the navier stokes equation and there are the, the third equation you have to determine you have to know how to model it all right, uh, now let's begin. That's rather a short episode this time. Uh, somehow I had a problem with uh, the IPython notebooks, so the equations are not that not that visible anymore here. Um, but you can see the link, and maybe that's better for you. And you can read the text if you want to um, take a deeper look into the physics here. Yeah. All right, let's start with MATLAB. Now, step number nine. I will do that just for um, just from the ground up because it's not that much code. So you have your verbal declaration, and as you'll see, clear all. And you do an x equals twenty and y equals twenty and the number of iteration equals one thousand. The x equals two divided by an x minus one and the same for the y. All right. Now you have to define x and y. x equals zero dx two. So it's a vector ranging from zero to two with step dx, and y equals zero dy two. All right, next, uh, the function p itself is zeros and x and y. And p of an x, comma, um, I don't know the English word for that symbol, but this indicates that it takes all the values in this dimension. So you can think of p as a matrix with um, 
NX rows and NY columns. And for every column in the row NX, the following uh, value is added Y. Okay, and Y is this vector climbing from 0 to 2. And maybe we will just look what it looks like x, y, p. Let's give that a try. So you see that at an x, which an x equals 20, yeah, um, which in this case is 2 in x, um, there you have this y ranging from 0 to 2, this, this vector and all those terms are getting put into the, the function. Okay, so that's your basic function. Now, what you want to do is you want to iterate over iter num it, um, uh, iteration number e iteration equals 1 to n e t, so the number of iterations, and you say pd equals p, so that's PD is also, again, the container for your current solution for P, which we will calculate now. So for I equals one, uh, no, two, two, and X minus one. Do I need a bracket? No. And this ends somewhere, and we have a second loop. And there we say for j equals 2 with step and y. Uh, no. For j equals 2, 2, and y minus 1. And we say here p from yj equals pd i plus 1, comma j plus pd i minus 1 comma j times dy squared plus pd i comma j minus 1 plus pd i comma j plus 1 Closing that, dx squared. And that all divided by dx squared plus dy squared half. Somewhere a bracket is missing. That should close the last ones. I think I forgot to open one open. Two closed here. Okay. Now it makes more sense. Still an arrow here. Ah, the end is missing. Okay, and now we have to do the um, the boundary conditions because otherwise they will get okay p equals 2 to an x minus 1 comma 1 equals p 2 to an x minus 1 comma 2 and p two to an x minus one comma and y equals p two to an x minus one comma and y minus one. Now let's take a look if we understand what that means. So from um, row 2 to the row nx minus 1 and in the first column all the values are put equal to um, the to 
to the second column. So first column and second column are set equal and last column and the column before the last column are set equal. Alright, now let's put an end here and now we are done with the equation. Let's check back if we maybe get some info from here. Now the, the I didn't write down the equation as it should be, but all right. Um, for those of you who want to check the analytical solution, if um, the solution you implement is correct, here is the analytical solution you could implement. All right, now let's run it. And I forgot a semicolon somewhere. Yeah, okay. But now, uh, yeah, we should include a surf command. And the surf command can be behind all iterations. Function is p. All right, now let's do that. Okay, now you can see what a function looks like. And just maybe play around with it a little bit. Um, maybe you can set a number of iterations very low, then you will get something more steep. Or you could change the iterations to a very high level. Then it will take forever. <laughs> no, um, then you get a more curvy surface. Well, that's about it for the Laplace equation. And thanks for watching. Until next time.